Welcome back to In The Sheets. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about OnlyFans. And a little disclaimer before I start, this is not a how to do OnlyFans or how to be successful and make money on OnlyFans. Um, This is going to be my experience as being an OnlyFans creator for the past two and a half years and the things that I have dealt with, the challenges that I have faced and the OnlyFans industry as a whole, what I sort of think about it. So just a little disclaimer there. But if you are looking at wanting to start an OnlyFans or to make more money on yours, I do actually have a program which is in the link in my bio. It's just a PDF program. Um, So if that is something that you would like to purchase, that is also available. But yes, this podcast is purely going to be talking about my experience and the OnlyFans industry as a whole. So I first started my OnlyFans account back in November of 2019. So back when it was kind of new, um, it was definitely a big decision on my part. And my beautiful partner, Lewis, was very uh, positive and really helped me make that decision for myself. At that time, I was currently just working as a receptionist. I had just finished uni. I literally had negative money in my bank account, um, no real plan of my finances. So I decided to start an OnlyFans account with his support as well and also my family's support, luckily for me. And yeah, it just kind of took off. So I started it in November of 2019 and I started only doing topless content. That was only what I was comfortable with. And at the time I did a lot of artistic nude modeling. So I sold a lot of those photos on there as well. And Over time, my OnlyFans account definitely transitioned into more explicit things, which I will get into throughout this podcast. But when I first started OnlyFans, the market was so new and it was so easy to make money. Like I was sending out 30 second videos of me jiggling my boobs for like $40 USD and having people buy that. I think I made like $20,000 in my first month. Um, Australian and it was insane like it was just insane at the time that that was an option for making money and I was so shocked about how simple it was to do and that was kind of at the beginning before I really kind of got into it more deeply and started dealing with some of the negative sides of doing OnlyFans. So obviously that was all great, the making the money part and being able to quit my job and just work from home. And the part that kind of came to me unexpected, I mean, I should have expected it because at the time OnlyFans was very much so hated on, but the hate that I started to receive for doing OnlyFans was pretty crazy when I first started. I was getting DMs all the time. I was having people talking about me behind my back about how much of a slut I was. And I think a lot of that came because not everyone was clear on what exactly OnlyFans was, or they were really angry at the fact that women were able to make money this way. And just to put it out there, there was a lot of men at the time with OnlyFans accounts too. So it wasn't just a female industry. There were plenty of men who did OnlyFans accounts. Um, But I think those were the two main reasons there was a lot of hate was one, a lack of education and understanding about what it actually was and two, jealousy. So I definitely got a lot of hate from men early on because of them telling me things like, oh, women have it so easy or, you know, I wish I could make money like that. And then there was the other side of the coin with the hate from men, which was, you know, I wasn't pure anymore. I was a slut. I was a skank. I can't believe you're putting that out there. You know, you're everyone's girlfriend, that kind of narrative. And then the hate from women that I received was sort of similar, the slut shaming, which I definitely have talked about in episode one of this podcast in my episode, let's talk about sluts. But the other part from women that I received a lot of hate was just a lack of understanding about what OnlyFans actually was. So many people, I guess this would have been both genders, just assumed that OnlyFans was full-blown porn. And for a lot of people, it was full-blown porn, which there was nothing wrong with. But you had so many different types of creators doing OnlyFans. Like myself, I only did topless content when I first started. Um, I have friends who have done it for years who have never showed anything uncensored. They've just done lingerie things. I've got friends who are burlesque performers who post their um, things on that because obviously platforms like Instagram and Facebook and TikTok are quite strict on what you can post. So there are a lot of creators who use OnlyFans as a way to share their art and their content in a way that one rewards them 
um, with getting paid, obviously, and two, in a way that they won't be banned and they can actually share that content. So there was definitely a lot of hate in the beginning, but honestly, it didn't really phase me that much because obviously going from having negatives to my bank account to suddenly making thousands and thousands of dollars per month was something very, very huge to me. And it definitely didn't come without work. I mean, this is something that I feel like is definitely not talked about enough with OnlyFans. I do think it is glamorized a lot in social media. Um, And a lot of people just think it's really, really quick, easy money. Um, For me at the beginning, it was a little bit like that because I was fortunate enough to have a bigger brand on social media. So I obviously had more reach and input with who I could um, promote my OnlyFans account to. And I think the second thing was, is that at the time that I started OnlyFans, it was still so new. So there weren't that many people on there. So I was able to charge a lot higher than what I can currently charge for content. So it was a little bit easy at the start, but I think something that people don't take into consideration is making content is a lot of work. Like there is a lot of work that goes into making content for OnlyFans. You have to deal with, um, you know, the combination of men just wanting everything from you, abusive messages, having to create custom content, having to keep up with the demand of your subscribers to keep them entertained and happy was very challenging, especially when I first started because it was completely dictated by the wants of other people. So I had to cater to them. And that was something that took a lot of time to get used to um, just dealing with that in general. So here I was sort of early 2020. This is kind of just before COVID hits. Um, Doing OnlyFans was fun for me at that time because it was so new. I was just doing topless content um, and I was starting to realize the amount of work that was going into having a successful OnlyFans account. Um, So like I just mentioned before, creating content for my subscriber base, there was also being able to promote it and get around the Instagram guidelines without being deleted at the time early 2020, it was actually a lot easier. We could post our direct OnlyFans link onto our Instagram pages without getting banned. Um, That is no longer an option anymore. Um, However, back then we were able to promote it a lot more easily, but there was that type of work. So the content creation, promoting it, and then obviously keeping up with with the demand and also making sure that your mental health wasn't negatively affected by doing something like this and the hate that came with it. So now fast forward to kind of March of 2020, and this is when COVID hits, OnlyFans starts getting really, really busy um, because obviously a lot of people lost their jobs. So a lot of people turned to OnlyFans as a secondary source of income or a new primary source of income. So what OnlyFans was beforehand, which is a little bit more of a niche market, now became very, very saturated with so many, so many users, which Definitely had its benefit for us as creators. Obviously, there were more people on the site to, who were wanting to subscribe and buy content. However, there were so many more creators now on the site. So it created more competition and more need to supply content that would keep up with that competition. And like I mentioned earlier, when I first started doing OnlyFans, and this was literally only a few months beforehand, I was able to sell, you know, topless videos where I didn't even show nipples for $30 USD, something like that. When it got to COVID time in 2020 and the market started um, becoming huge and we had lots more creators jumping on, that also kind of meant that the prices started to drop. So what I was able to charge for things when I first started was not the case anymore. People weren't buying that because you have so many more creators on the site selling things for less. So just say if I were to send out a one minute long topless video, when I first started, I would be able to sell that for $40 USD. By that point, only a few months later, because of how saturated that market got, those prices may be dropped to $19.99. And that may not sound like a big difference, but you know, over time, that is a big, big drop. And it definitely started to have an effect on my mental health. And I know a lot of the other girls who I knew who were doing it, it had an effect on their mental health because they started seeing it as something that was dictating their worth. You know, whatever they priced their content as was what they valued themselves as. So as they were forced to drop these prices lower and lower, as the um, market became more saturated, it kind of started to negatively affect their self-esteem and how they viewed themselves because they were having to price themselves lower and lower to keep up with that demand or no one was going to be buying the content. And that in itself was definitely one of the biggest kind of mental struggles early on with doing OnlyFans. Um, And then it was at this point 
with the market getting so um, saturated and with COVID happening, it was at that point that my partner and I decided, look, why don't we make a couples only fans account? We won't do anything explicit. We'll just, you know, do sort of teasing videos and things like that because the fact that we are a couple will get a lot more subscribers and people will want to see that probably more than your solo content. So we created a couples account and I kept my solo account. And so we had two and it did start off quite innocently, not very explicit at all. Like I think just maybe kissing videos and again, topless videos. And we were making quite a lot of money. But again, as the market started to keep growing and growing and more creators were jumping on, we were finding that to keep up with the demand, we had to kind of start pushing our boundaries a little bit and um, pushing through some limitations that we had previously set. And there was also a lot of pressure from our subscribers. You know, people weren't happy with the non-explicit content. And we just had a lot of pressure there. And, you know, the money at the time was really quite amazing. And it was definitely kind of a moral gray area that we had to just, we had to kind of choose between because the money was absolutely insane. And on one hand, you know, we could make all of this money now and really set ourselves up for the future. It could help our other businesses or two, we could make less money and kind of be driven out of the market. And that was kind of a decision that we made. We started to make our content a little bit more explicit. Now, I just also want to say here, um, so I've been doing OnlyFans since yeah, uh, November of 2019. I have always kind of kept one boundary. For me, my boundary is I have never shown my vagina or my pussy. That is just a personal boundary of mine. I have never shown it and I probably won't ever show it. Um, it's always just been everything else besides that. So when we did the couple's account and we started to push those boundaries a little bit because of how great the money was at the time. I definitely stayed clear on that boundary. I never wanted to show my vagina or anything like that. Um, So we did respect that, but we started doing some more explicit content, you know, hand jobs, blow jobs, um, some sex tapes we just couldn't see from the waist down, things like that. And I'm not going to lie to you. The money was amazing. I think in one of our best months, we made $50,000 in one month. And it was insane. I mean, to think about that, that is someone's yearly income that we made in one month just from making some videos. But this was definitely something that was starting to negatively impact not only my self-esteem, but my partner's self-esteem and our relationship. You know, I felt like the standards that I was held to were different for him. Like I felt like I was slut shamed a lot more. You know, I had content leaked. I had things like that happen. And I just felt really, really bad about myself. And I am very, very pro sex worker. And I have the utmost respect for uh, porn stars or women who do pornographic content on OnlyFans, because I know how hard that is. I know how disrespected you can be. And I know how mentally exhausting and draining that can be on you and your own, um, view of yourself. So I just want to preframe this by saying that I have the utmost respect and admiration for women who do full pornography. But at that point, as we had been doing, you know, more explicit content, it was really starting to eat away at my mental health. It was eating away at my confidence and the way that I viewed myself, because for me personally, it just wasn't something that I wanted out there. And it wasn't something that I wanted to be known for. It just didn't feel right to me. I just, I hated doing it and it made me so uncomfortable. And that kind of, you know, ate away at me for a little while. And I know it ate away to my partner too. And we eventually made the decision to stop doing explicit content because we noticed that not only was it affecting our confidence and our mental health, but it was actually affecting our sex life. So when you do explicit content on OnlyFans, obviously you have to film a lot of content and, you know, sometimes bulk film it, sometimes do customs, things like that. So sex for us almost became like a job. It became like a chore, you know, we'd wake up and things like that. And instead of just having sex, like a normal couple, as if we wanted to, we'd be like, fuck, okay, we haven't got any videos to send out today. We've got to film a blowjob video or things like that. And it became such a draining chore and it was so not enjoyable and it really, really negatively impacted our sex life. And then the other kind of final straw for when we decided to stop the explicit content was when our content started to get leaked. Now, luckily I have some amazing lawyers who helped me uh, get down leaked content. So it didn't stay up for very long, but we kind of just made the decision. You're like, you look, we were kind of just like, look, 
we've made a lot of money doing this and it's been really, really great during COVID. It really helped out our businesses, but it's just not for us. And it's not something that either of us were proud of or confident of. And it's not something that we really wanted to broadcast to the world when we knew that we had other things that we wanted to be pursuing. So we made the decision to stop our couple's account. So I just continued on with my solo account then. And I, um, did some explicit content kind of then. I still never showed my pussy, but I started doing more content like, you know, JOIs, which is code for jerk off instruction. So it's basically where you will film a video and you'll be dirty talking and telling the camera or telling the guy how you want them to jerk off for you. Um, So that kind of became one of my main things I would do you know, dildo blowjobs or dildo titty fucks or things like that, that would kind of be the most explicit I went. And then just kind of over the panty sort of videos and a lot more topless things. I was okay with that. I don't, I don't know why, but I've always just felt more okay with doing things by myself than I did with a partner. And it just morally sat better with me. So I went back to doing my solo account, which I continue to still do. Um, And it's definitely been Something I've struggled with, I know the last couple of months I've been struggling a little bit. Um, Late last year, um, one of mine and my partner's videos did actually get stolen and someone actually sent it to my mum, which was an interesting experience. They DM'd it to her on Instagram, um, which was definitely a bit malicious. And luckily for me, I have a very, very supportive family and my mum just laughed about it. And that definitely also... um, cemented that we were definitely done with doing explicit content and couples content, um, that experience, but that, um, happened a few months ago. And then, you know, over the couple of the last couple of months, I've definitely felt a pull away from OnlyFans just because I felt a bit of a negative effect on my mental health. I don't enjoy doing it. I found it very, very draining and I wasn't inspired to be making any of the content. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing it anytime soon. I definitely will keep it because I think it's an incredible platform. Um, However, you know, the type of content that I continue to do may change over time depending on how I'm feeling. Um, But I just wanted to share that because I feel like, again, like I said in the beginning of this podcast, that OnlyFans is very over glamorized as this really easy, amazing thing, but it's not. It's hard. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of content creation and it's very, very draining on your mental health and on your self-confidence and the way that you view yourself. So yes, I still do it because I think it's an incredible tool in terms of the money you can make from it and how, how I don't want to say easy, but how simple it can be when you understand the tools and the hacks of how to use it and how to get more subscribers, if that makes sense. It's definitely not easy, but once you kind of understand it and treat it like a business and have systems, it can be very rewarding. So I definitely still rate it as a platform, but I think it was very important for me to share on this podcast my experience doing it. And I know this is the experience of quite a few other people that it gradually can really affect you, affect you negatively mentally. And I think that's something that is really important. It needs to be shared because I see a lot of the time, all of these girls, especially underage girls who, you know, who are waiting till they turn 18 so they can start on OnlyFans. I get asked all the time if people should start on OnlyFans and people talk so often about the goods of it that they'd never really talk about the negative sides. And I'm, my attitude is I'm I'm like, go for it. If you really want to create an OnlyFans, go for it. But be sure of your decision and make sure you've really, really weighed up all the pros and all the cons. And if you're comfortable with that, then completely go for it because it can be absolutely incredible if you're comfortable, but if you're not comfortable, it can be hell. And some of my biggest advice that I've been telling people recently is, especially with your content creation, you've got to be comfortable with the content you make for there to be the risk that it may get leaked. So if you're comfortable with making this content and if you're comfortable with it getting leaked, then go ahead and go for it. But if you're feeling like you kind of want to make more explicit content, if you wouldn't want to get get that content leaked, don't make it. Money is not worth pushing your boundaries. So for me, like I said, my biggest boundary that I've always had is I've never shown my pussy and I never will because to me, money is not worth crossing that line. Crossing that line morally to me just wouldn't sit right with me. And I know if that ever got leaked, I would be horrified, I would be mortified and I would just feel really, really terrible about myself. So no amount of money is ever going to be worth that to me. It's a line that I will never cross. And that is something that I really want to emphasize on this podcast. Be very, very clear of your boundaries and it's okay to have boundaries and to stick to them. 
and don't feel pressured by what other people are doing or how much money other people are making or the, you know, the nagging or the threats from your subscribers because they definitely will happen. You will definitely have a lot of people nag you for things or even threaten you or give you shit or slut shame you because you won't do it. But you just have to stay clear with your boundaries and what you're comfortable doing. And at the end of the day, it's your body, it's your decision. So you make the choices about it. So I know this was a little bit of a shorter podcast today, but I've had a lot of people ask me about my OnlyFans experience or they're unclear of of what exactly I do on OnlyFans, what other people do or what it actually entails. So I just wanted to jump on here for this episode today and talk to you about my personal experience. And again, I want to emphasize that this is my experience, not the experience of others. Some people may have a lot more positive experiences than me. Some people may have worse experiences than me. I feel like I'm quite neutral. I can see both sides of it and see the benefits and the negatives to it. And I wanted to be very, very open with you about that, about how it's affected me negatively and the amazing benefits it's also had. So again, just really, really remember that this is my personal experience and that's going to differ from person to person. But I know so many of you have been curious about this. So I wanted to share in detail my journey, my experience, where I'm at with OnlyFans and how I see it. I still see it as an incredible platform that I still continue to use. I just think to go on it with caution and be very, very clear of yourself and what you're comfortable with. But that is it for this episode today and I will see you in the next one.